What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to episode 47 of Hit the Books, the podcast here to give you all the sports talk, sports news, sports gambling, you name it in sports. And we at Hit the Books want to deliver it to you. If you're new to the podcast, be sure to listen to us weekly and follow us on your social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Those can be found in the description below or search us up at hitthebooks.pod or at hitthebooks underscore pod. Back with all the boys this week, myself, Huff, Mackie. A rather light week for us this week. Little college football and golf in the mix. No complaints there. Enough from me in this intro. Let's introduce my co-hosts, Huff and Mackie. Huff, you're up first. Week off next week, preparing for the NFL season. What do you got for me? Yeah, what's going on, boys? Uh, happy to be back another week. Got Mackie back this week. Like you said, looking ahead to uh, the NFL offseason or NFL offseason being over as we get into the NFL uh, regular season starting up in a couple couple short weeks, September 8th. That Bills Rams game can't come soon enough. So, not much with me. And let's shoot it over to Mackie. Mackie, you were gone last week, but you're back this week. NFL approaching. What do you got for me, brother? Yeah, what's going on, boys? Sorry I couldn't make it last week. A uh, little mix up. But uh, yeah, we're getting just getting closer to the NFL season. We got some college football to talk about. We're about two weeks out of that. So yeah, just get into it. Yes, football, football, football. It seems to be what's on everyone's mind. But we got a little bit of stuff out of the MLB first. The San Diego Padres. Oh my God. The San Diego Padres superstar Fernando Tatis Jr is facing an 80-game suspension without pay for violating the MLB's performance-enhancing drug policy. Pretty big loss there for the Padres. What do you guys got for me? Mackie, you want to start on this? Yeah, this just sucks. I mean, top five player in the in the world, in my opinion. And, you know, you just hate to see things like this. You see uh, Clevenger came out and said it's just a selfish move by him and Granted, it is like, why are you doing this? But um, you know, say, you don't. I'm trying to find the statement. Did you see the statement that he put out? Who? Tatis. No, I did not. I'm trying to find it. So keep going on your point, but I'm trying to find the statement that he released about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just it just hurts the entire team. That team has so much hope now with uh, getting Soto and Josh Bell, but you know, taking a player like that out of the lineup for. 80 games. I'm. Mean, that's got to be like. What is? How does that work? Carrying over in the playoffs. Do you just count each game? Do the, yeah. Do those games count in playoffs? I'm not sure. I don't know. But so here's the here here's the quote. It says um, he released this to and via an MLBPA statement. It turns out that I inadvertently took a medication to treat ringworm that contain that contained Clos T ball. I know I'm botching that, but. Clost the ball, something like that. I should have used the resources available to me in order to ensure that no banned substances were in what I took, and I failed to do so. Penning, that's true. That sucks. Are you are you calling bullshit on that? So wait, 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 wait. and then I just found Clevenger's. Clevenger said it's the second time we've been disappointed with him. You hope he grows up and learns from this, and learns that it's about more than just him right now. Yeah, that's what I, I I saw that, but um, I didn't see that. I what knew, was the first I remember, time? I remember I heard some shakeup about that. Yeah, I don't know what the first time would be, but damn. Yeah, I saw that video of Clevenger saying that. I mean, it's yeah, true I mean, though. Like he's speaking facts. Yeah, like that's a team like we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. They definitely have a chance at a World Series this year, and, and he's the face of it. Now it's yeah. That's uh, nuts. Damn. It. Big loss there for the Padres, like I said. Dodgers pitcher Walker Bueller will undergo season ending elbow surgery on August 23rd. So I did not see this. I fucking have him on my fantasy team, so I'm gonna come out straight biased on this. I'm pissed. You didn't know you didn't even hear about this? No, I mean I knew I knew he's been on the IL most of the season. I haven't really like kept up to date with it too much because he's just been on the 60-day IL. I'm checking the Yahoo Fantasy. Yeah, he will undergo season-ending right elbow surgery on August 23rd. There it is. So, guess who's getting dropped? 
There you go. Yeah, Walker Bueller, the free agency market. Fuck, dude. Yeah, that's obviously a huge loss for the Dodgers. Obviously, bigger than a regular season thing. Uh, they were hoping to get him back for the playoffs and a team that's has their sights set on another World Series appearance. Or, you know what I mean? NLCS, at least. Uh, it's a deep NL this year, so uh be interesting to see what happens, obviously, with their pitching rotation now. But Bueller, one of the best dudes in the MLB, top five easily, in my opinion. So anytime you get a guy like that out for the season, it's like – but some of these pitchers, it's just like – you're. it's so expected in the MLB to lose some of these top guys for the whole year, I feel like, every year. Like guys just – like pitchers just throw out their arm every year. Scherzer, like fucking DeGrom, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I mean, you hate to see it happen, but like it happens every year, and like yeah, I mean it's bound to happen. Yeah, some people. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, they haven't had him all year, so like it's not like they're like losing him out of nowhere. They seem to be doing all right, but obviously a guy like that you'd want to have in your rotation in the playoffs. Yeah. For sure, big loss for the Dodgers as well. We'll see what happens there. And with the postseason for the MLB on the rise, we've got some dates coming in. The wildcard games are going to be played Friday, October 7th through Sunday, October 9th. The ALDS and NLDS will be on, will start on October 11th. The NL Championship Series will start on October 18th. And the American League Championship Series will start on the on October 19th, the World Series coming in shortly after that. So lots to look forward to in the month of October, as we know in the MLB. You guys Damn, want to comment crazy. on that at I didn't all? Re- I, didn't re- I didn't realize this was this close. It's coming Jesse, up quick. That's the, weekend, that's the weekend we're at the Steeler-Bills game. Yeah, wild it card is. weekend. Ooh. Are the Pirates going to be in the wild card game? <laughs> no. Pretty sure they're mathematically already eliminated. <laughs> Wild card weekend this year is I feel like it's gonna be sick is like teams like like Mackie, what's I haven't really looked at too many too, like the standings lately. What's the if, this, least like, if the season ended today, it'd be Phillies Padres. That's right. And that's the, sick, dude. Like, Phillies Padres that's, and they play the awesome. winner. And then the Mets play the winner of that, and then it would be Braves Cardinals. And then they would play the winner. They'd play the Dodgers. That'd be sick too. Dude, Phillies Padres yeah. would be filthy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I'm excited now for playoff baseball. Yeah, it's gonna be a uh... the best. The best time of year is when and it's NFL, NHL, and playoff baseball. Yeah, like we got a lot more. In there. We got a lot to look forward to before we get to look forward to this, but. Yeah. Dude, playoff baseball is elite. 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 It's so you play, you, you play 162 games in a season, you you give up some games. Like, you, But, like, when you're playing, like, in playoffs, every game is just so – it's 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 cool to watch, like, all the best players just go, like, balls to the wall every game. Because, obviously, yeah, you like, don't for 162 games straight, so. Like, I like the years, like, the – was it last year or the year before, the, the Rays? Like when like a Cinderella team kind of makes a run 20, in baseball. 2020? Yeah, it was 2020. Was it, yeah, Tampa Bay. That was yeah. a good, I don't know. Like, obviously, was, I don't think – no one picked them to come out of the AL that year. That was like um same thing Bengals this year in football. Yeah. Same yeah. exact thing, but they obviously – I feel like that it's one. so much harder in baseball because of the salary cap thing. Yeah, yeah. But the Rays are like you know a good I mean? team. Yeah. That was Randy Rosarino's uh, rookie year. Yeah, that was the year that he, like, broke out. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah, definitely got some baseball talk coming. Obviously, as we get into – we're mid-August right now. Still got the month of September to wrap up the MLB season. But, uh, yeah, as we get into October, definitely going to be talking some baseball along with the NFL and NHL season and if NBA coming back around that time. So, that's a great time of year for sports. Definitely. Couldn't agree more. And with that, we got more KD news out of the NBA. Amid off-season talks between the future of KD and the Brooklyn Nets, multiple sources released statements saying that 
it is more likely that KD will retire from the NBA entirely before playing another game for the Brooklyn Nets. Durant then took on to Twitter on Monday to say, I know most people will believe unnamed sources over me, but if it's anyone out there that'll listen, I don't plan on retiring anytime soon. Shit is comical at this point. Big statement by KD on Twitter. He hasn't been a guy that's scared to go to Twitter to solve his problems or, you know, I mean, answer the answer questions and, you know, I mean, throughout his career, but I'm just, I just keep hearing him in Boston is like realistic, but then you hear, uh, I saw some statement the other day about Jalen Brown, like he wants to be a Celtic for life. And like, you got to think if Kevin Durant goes there, if it doesn't work out, he might only be there one year. You know what I mean? Like, do they really want to give up all this? And if it doesn't work, Kevin Durant could just bounce ship again. Yeah, and what you have in in Boston, like that team is so, like they're so their chemistry is just through the roof. I think they they probably have the best chemistry in the league. You got those guys that have been playing together since what twenty eighteen. I was gonna say them, and I like the just like vibe of the the like young players on Phoenix, Aiton, Booker, Bridges. You know what I mean? Well, just like the young, and then they got like the vets down there. I'm not saying like they're the better team than the Celtics. I definitely think the Celtics are the better team. They have better players, but yeah, chemistry wise, definitely they're right there. I feel like when the Suns resigned DeAndre, and it kind of took him out of the conversation for KD. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think I think he ends up going to Boston. I don't see any situation where he doesn't. Just because I still want him to go to Miami. Uh, I, I hate Miami, dude. I do too. Like, but I don't know. I just I don't want to see him. I thought Phoenix would have been really cool. I wanted him to go to Phoenix. That would have been sick. Because that, that that has n- I don't know any Phoenix Suns fans, and if anyone's a Phoenix Suns fan, out out of, out of the blue, my okay. You're, my boy is because he goes to University of Arizona, but he's the well, only one yeah, I know too. <laughs> I'll give him that. You know what I mean? Like the only reason I know some of those. I mean, I know someone that's technically they could probably call themselves a Phoenix Suns fan. They say their favorite. They claim their favorite player is Steve Nash. So. Steve Nash and here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like okay. So I mean, I definitely was rooting for Phoenix, but like you said, it's seeming like uh, Boston's becoming more and more realistic. I mean, yeah, it seems to be the only trade destination at this point. Which is but, like, crazy. What if he like? What if nothing? What if it falls through and he has to play another season with Kyrie? Like, what? He's still playing with Kyrie. They could do. Brooklyn could still be like sick. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you can't as long as they don't get uh, like. There's no way they get swept again. Like. You can't. Yeah, well, you just can't count on a team that has Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the roster. Yeah, especially if Kyrie decides that he wants to actually be there. You know what I mean? Like, give full 100% I'm in on this team. And, like, they have dudes like – I am I had faith in that Claxton dude last year, Nick Claxton. He's, He's a, good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, for he'll get you some blocks, rebounds, and, like, 12 points a game, like 12, 12, and 5. Like, that's a stud for a team that has Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, absolutely. They had some – well, I they should have kept on uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, I think. He's good. But he's not a player that, like, you send him to the Wizards and his career is going to die. He's a good player to play with players like Durant and Kyrie. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's every few weeks we got something new about KD coming through the line that we got to talk about. He's just keeping himself relevant. Always, right? He loves Twitter too. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, he's never been scared. Like I said, he's never been scared to go to Twitter. I, he just, I forget. I feel like he just called out some random, um, some random rapper. I think her name is like Cash Doll or something. She tweeted something about K, her, calling herself KD, and he goes, "You're not the real KD. Stop trying to use my name for cloud or something like that." I saw that actually. That was a that was a while ago though. Yeah, that was a couple weeks ago. That's funny. Oh, man. All right, with that, Ben Simmons and the Philadelphia 76ers have come to settle on grievances over his withheld salary of $20 million. I saw this, so I figured I'd put it in here. I I read it. I read the article, and it didn't really make any sense to me. I don't know what they're doing with the $20 million. Yeah. So is this like is it when is this from? Is this like the time that he was holding out? Yeah, it's from when he didn't play. Okay. 
So I don't really know. I don't, I don't. I don't know any information on this, honestly. So he's where he's still. In, he's in Brooklyn. Yeah, he's in Brooklyn. So he's another guy. Like if he has a decent year, which is obviously kind of. Oh, I didn't even. A, yeah, you didn't even. I didn't even think about him. It's kind of turning into a long shot statement at this point. Like hoping Ben Simmons just kind of like turns into a different player and like kind of forgets all the tendencies that he had in Philly, but. Still has yet to play a game for the Nets. Uh, I feel like he's still Ben Simmons. Like, yeah, he, he could thrive, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like, dude, just put him at the. You know what I mean? Him run, let him run the ball up the floor. And Kyrie, you know he loves passing. Yeah, like he doesn't need to score there. Could be interesting if that team gets back together. We will see. That's going to wrap up our NBA for the night. Next up, the NFL. Great first week of preseason coming there. Second week of pre second weekend of preseason coming up soon. Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, and Sam Howell shine in their preseason debuts. Why Carolina's Matt Corral has struggled this week in the first week of preseason. What do you guys think? Yeah, so. Um, I'll start with the boy Pickett came in at the at halftime. Uh, it was a, I think it was a tie game when he came in, obviously held his own two touchdowns, uh, went right down the field in the start of the third quarter, got the first touchdown. Um, I think he went five for five on the first drive. It was looking pretty sharp. Uh, ended up kind of, I think second drive went pretty rough, but, uh, when the, you know what I mean? When the time mattered, when we needed the points, he went right down game-winning touchdown. So, I mean, I know it's a preseason game playing against three third stringers. Like, you can look at it two ways, I know, but he's playing with third stringers. You know what I mean? You just take it for what it's worth, 13 for 15, 95 yards, two touchdowns in the second half of a preseason game. But uh, for your first appearance in the NFL, definitely something to, you know what I mean, have a chip on your shoulder going into the next week. Just kind of remember what you did. And as you said, like, uh, the video of Sam Howe running around for the the Commanders. I think Carson Wentz could have a pretty short leash on him in Washington if uh, things aren't really going too well with Carson and the new offense with with the Commanders. I think they're gonna not be too scared to go with. I mean, I think Heineke's still there, and like Howell, they have a lot of options in that quarterback room. Obviously, Carson Wentz not necessarily the most proven quarterback over the past couple of years of. of especially his last year in Indianapolis. So, um, but yeah, it's looking as far as Matt Corral's case, it's looking like Baker uh, Baker's pretty much going to be the starter in Carolina. So it doesn't seem like his situation is going to be too relevant for this season, at least. So, well, you got Sam uh, Darnold too. Yeah, exactly. So it seems like the battle is more Darnold and Baker. You're not really hearing yeah. too much of Corral kind of cutting yeah. in there. It really, I haven't heard Corral at all, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, um, and Ritter actually, I didn't really mention him. He had the game. He had a game winning, like pretty long pass. It was a nice throw. Yeah, Sam, um, Sam Howell in in Washington. You know, that team is in a wide open division right now. You got team. You got Cowboys. Don't really have that much promise this year. Eagles, obviously, up in the air. So Washington starts off. If, if Wentz is not playing well, they'll they probably won't way too long to switch that over in a division that they could possibly come out on top in. Yeah. And if how, you know, like if how comes in there and just starts doing whatever, you know what I mean? Young just adds a new look to that offense. You could win some games. Yeah, exactly. You probably don't, probably don't need more than like 10 wins this year in the NFC East to win that oh, division. Yeah. yeah. 10 and seven will win it for you. So, you know, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, a lot of promise with Kenny Pickett too. It's nice to see a quarterback come in like that and show his he knows how to compete on thirteen to, for fifteen. To get back to get back to that game, Mackie, did you see that Pickens catch and the, the toe drag in the Yeah, I did, yeah. I did. Dude, he's the man and the that NFL, was awesome. NFL media is just eating him up. They're calling him NFL young boy. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good one. Yeah, he his character is definitely I was gonna say they keep interviewing him and shit, trying to get like his personality out there. He's definitely gonna be a stud. Yeah, a lot of a lot of deals for him, a lot of endorsement deals for him. Oh yeah, they're they're coming. Yeah, man, a lot of good stuff out of the first week of the preseason. 
But another not so good good thing, the Jets quarterback, Zach Wilson, the dog, injured his knee in the preseason game against the Eagles. Wilson be Wilson will be flying to Los Angeles to undergo his knee procedure. Expected to miss two to four weeks. The dog is out. This is good news, I think, for the Jets because he went down non-contact, and I literally thought he just tore his ACL and he was done for the season. So yeah, I was hearing, I thought his ACL I thought as well. Hearing two to four weeks, they're they, they couldn't be happier to hear that. I mean, Jets don't have a lot of promise as it is, but you know, maybe you can get in a few extra wins in there with Zach Wilson. Yeah, and you're hearing a lot. I don't know if you're hearing this, but all I've been hearing a lot is like everyone saying out of Jets camp, Flacco has been giving Wilson a run for his money. Really. And, yeah, so it's obviously Flack. They're they're saying Flacco is going to be the starter week one, and uh, the the Jets play the Ravens week one. Flacco is going to play. The That's Ravens. cool, dude. And then you know he's going to like win the game somehow, and then yeah, like <laughs> get that starting spot and still go like three and fourteen whenever they go. Yeah, yeah. Will Zach Wilson will come back and go on like a, a five game losing streak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. You don't like to see that though for a young quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, especially that non, like you said, non-contact. I thought his season was over. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's done. Everyone, all my yeah. all my friends that are Jets fans, they're like, yeah, he's done. And you know, yeah, Jets was... fans, they think they think they're gonna like win the division this year. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was brutal to watch. Truly. And some contract negotiations out of Baltimore. The Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson said he will stop his contract negotiations when the regular season begins, per ESPN's Jameson Jameson Hensley. Jackson said when he when asked about a hard deadline, the season's coming up. We're going to be good this season. When asked if he would like to deal like the deal done before week one, he responded, Yes, for sure. So maybe we see something before the beginning of week one for Lamar Jackson. What do you guys think? Yeah, and obviously Lamar being uh, – he doesn't have an agent, so he's negotiating this deal himself. Uh, so that's kind of why he's saying he'd like to get the, like to get it done before week one, but uh, he's going to be stopping the negotiations at that. That's the deadline. Uh, and he'll go kind of have a bet on himself season and see what he can do going into the next year. Um, I I think this dude deserves every dollar that he – they should just hand him a blank check, the MVP, like – all these other quarterbacks are getting paid and none of them have an MVP or a playoff win. Lamar has both of those. Definitely a guy that should, def- that should make his money. Um, yeah, you'll you'll probably see a deal in the next week or two. He'll sign a fat contract. I mean... I'd love to see him leave the Ravens, though. Just get them the fuck out of he my won't. division. He won't. No, he's, he's, he's too perfect for that system. Mm-hmm. And all the hate he had coming out of the league, like... He's proved everyone wrong at this point. Just give him the give him his damn money. Yeah. Give him what he wants. Yeah, absolutely. Elite player deserves the cash. We'll see what happens here, hopefully pretty shortly. I found a little interesting uh stat here for the week first week of the preseason. NFL officials threw fifteen flags for illegal contact during the first week of the preseason an elevated number that reflected the league's request that the officials pay close attention to these fouls. Officials threw only 30, 36 flags for illegal contact in the entire 18-week regular season last year. This happened two other times when the league emphasized the rule. In 2014, flags for illegal contact rose from 148 from 52 in 2013. In 2004, they rose from 191 from 79 in 03. So there's two, I feel like there's two ways you could look at this. It's either the young and experienced players or you could look at it as they're kind of tightening shit up. But I'm uh, like, I was kind of looking yeah. at it. It's like you're, you're, you're talking about third string players, first year players. Yeah. So it, it's known that they don't take uh, these kind of statistics all preseason long. They don't compile them like they do for the regular season. Uh-huh. So we really don't know how the first week of the preseason compares year on year. So yes, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, Huff. I think it does come along with the uh, unexperienced players, but I hope we can follow up on this come first, second week and see if yeah, they are emphasizing it, on it more. It and, carries yeah. the regular season. And you never yeah. know. It might die by the beginning of the regular season. Like the refs might forget about it, like, you know, and yeah. not emphasize it as much by then. Yeah. Weeks out. So, 
Just thought weird, it was interesting. Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. College football is coming up soon, as we are also excited for the NFL. We are very excited for the college football. Lots of news done covered there. We got one thing this week. Alabama opens up at number one on the preseason AP Top 25. They're followed by Ohio State at two, Georgia at three, Clemson at four, Notre Dame at five to round out the top five of the AP Top 25. What do you guys think about this college football coming up soon? Lots to uncover. Yeah, you obviously got Bam at one here. I mean, year in, year out, they're usually number one, at least top three. So you saw that one coming. Ohio State in at two is – they have a lot of promise this year. Yeah, but there's I don't a lot know. of people high on Ohio State this year. It's, it's Ohio State. I think Georgia is the pick here. If we're talking like – not taking Alabama, I think Georgia. They, I mean, they they're returning. I'm not sure if it's all their deep. No, not all of their defense. But they're, they're returning like 90 percent of their defense. The thing that got them to the national championship game and won them the national championship game. So this team's going to be a team to beat this year, I think. And then you got Notre Dame at the. Yeah, I think Georgia. The two the two dudes. I'm I'm trying to think of the dudes on the defense that they lost. Jordan Davis. You lost Jordan Davis. Trevor. Yeah. Trayvon Walker, the number one overall pick, and then I feel like there was one or two dudes I'm forgetting, and then other than that. But, like, yeah, you look at teams like Alabama and Ohio State, they're the one and two, and they have the two Heisman favorites for quarterback and Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what they're looking at, I think. Get the Heisman quarterback, so put them at one and two. Clemson could have, obviously – you know what I mean? The, I'm saying back in the top, top five after that horrific I was season. Say the past couple of years kind of having a tough, not necessarily their best compared to their standards over the past couple of years. But, um, and then I'm, I'm a Notre Dame hater. So, well, how can you know. not be? Yeah. Every year you give them the benefit of the doubt and every year they prove that they cannot hang with those top four teams. And I think they play Ohio state the first week. They do. In yeah, in the so. shoe. So you're gonna they're dude, they're gonna go up like sixty points. People were saying did they give Notre Dame the five seed so they could lose to Ohio State week one and still manage to stay near the top ten. You know what I mean? Because if they lose to number two number two Ohio State, they're not gonna drop far. They're gonna go to like six, seven. What if you get pumped by thirty? Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta give up a respectable performance. You can't just. It also depends what six through ten does. If they win by thirty, then yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but I think that you're gonna get a good feel of how what type of team Notre Dame is in that week one. Yeah. I know Notre Dame has some studs. Um, I forget some of their names, but the one dude, uh, I think their tight end was on Bustin' with the Boys. He was talking. I think his name is Michael Meyer. They have a couple dudes that are supposed to be pretty good on the offensive side of the ball for Notre Dame. But like I said, I'm a Notre Dame hater. so I'm pretty ready for some college football. Isn't that next weekend? Mm, two, no, it's two weekends. Oh, is it two weeks? Well, what's today? Is it, isn't the first game the first? The first is Pitt W. August 27th starts college football. What's but it's like, game? what? Who's the first game? It's like Austin PA against Western Kentucky. Oh, yeah. There's no real good games that first week, but the next week is when like everyone else starts. Okay. Moving on from college football. We got a little golf to talk about. Tiger Woods is meeting with top golfers from the PGA to figure out how to deal with and compete with Liv. Yeah, um, he came out and said something about Liv L I V golf that it's like you're turning against what what got you here. You shouldn't leave the PGA. So he's like a big advocate on uh for the uh for the PGA. So I don't know. I don't know. What turn, he plans turned down, do. he turned down eight hundred million. So yeah. well, he's definitely gr- the spokesperson to be coming for the PGA. Granted, he he's already like a billionaire, I think. So yeah, he is. But 
Yeah, I mean, you're seeing all these guys bounce over, and, like, I really don't understand. Are they still allowed to play in, like, all the big majors? Yeah, I think so, because didn't Cam Smith just jump over, and then he was going to play in the... Yeah, I think you're right. But, like, what's to stop them from doing it if you're still going to let them do PGA Tour events? Yeah, exactly. And while we're on golf, you see Zalatoris finally won. Dude, did you see that shot he took that he was literally about – he was about to shoot. Rock. Yeah, he was about to shoot. He was about to hit yeah. that. He, he took a drop, but – Yeah. That well, other guy – because, It was because the guy – yeah, the guy fucked up his shot. So it was dude, worth he the choked. Drop. It was worth the drop. You get, you get Zalatoris on the edge like that and you fucking can't get out of the sand. Is that, isn't that what happened? Yeah, that's like a one in a million shot that ball sits where it did for uh-huh. Zalatoris. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good. Um, he's usually the guy that chokes in the end. Do you see what he said Horace. after he hit the? Yeah, do you see what he said and the the clip of him after he was picking up his ball from the 18th hole? He goes, "What are they gonna say now?" Because he finally fucking won one. Oh, really? That's sick. Yeah, because everyone always says he's the guy that chokes. I like him. Yeah, I do too. I think. I mean, obviously, he's been on the fringe of like, "Come on, dude, you're sit. You're getting second, second, third, second. Like you're top five every fucking tournament." He's got to win, win yeah. later. And what was it? The what was it? The players when he was in the playoff against Justin Thomas and Justin Thomas beat him. Mm-hmm. I think it was the players. Yeah. I think it was the players. I could be wrong on that, but I because I bet yeah. on him. I, I bet on was, him that. Yeah, he was in a playoff against Justin Thomas. I know that. Yeah, I I had Zalatoris in that. But yeah, it's a little bit a little bit of golf for you. Yeah, no complaints. A little bit of golf. A little... Love golf. With that, let's move into a little uh, little news in the betting world. The grocery store chain Kroger has submitted 22 applications to operate sports betting kiosks in their Ohio stores for when the state legalizes sports betting come January 1st. If approved, these will be Kroger's first operating sports betting facilities located in their stores. And honestly, I mean, I haven't heard of any other states with betting kiosks in grocery stores. It is what do literally you guys think about this. It's literally like taking over the world. Gambling is like becoming <laughs> Dude, it, that's insane. Think about that. Like kiosks in a grocery store. <laughs> Huff, like, say your line. You said it today. No, the I saw the meat. I was seeing memes people were like, "Oh, I'll go get the groceries today." Like <laughs> 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 don't worry honey i'll go to the grocery store today <laughs> yeah i got i got, I can handle that today that is crazy it's taking over everything sport mackie sports gambling is legal in west virginia and there's kroger's there's not kroger's around me you got to keep your eyes peeled on the kroger's dude if virginia. i walk into a, if i walk into a fucking kroger and i see a kiosk i'll lose my shit you gotta I put will... some cash in it <laughs> oh yeah i'll be yeah i'll be the first person to use it <laughs> Test it I'll, out. I'll follow the guy in and stalling. <laughs> where do you th- where do you think you go to cash your ticket? Like guest services at Kroger? Exactly. Or do you think they have any? Do you have they have the reverse machine? You put it in, it gives you the cash for it. They may, they may. I don't know. There's got to be some type of ID verification somewhere yeah. in the process. Yeah, you're right. It's true. Whether it's before you bet, before you cash. I don't know if they'd even let you get that far, but they wouldn't let you get that far. No shot. I agree. Yeah, they're not letting you click on the machine or something. You probably have to like scan your ID or something. Yeah, probably just scan it. But like, that is crazy though. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Interesting stuff. All right, we got a new segment coming up. Found some big uh, bets floating around. On Instagram and Twitter and such, thought I'd grab them. We'd go over them, maybe give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. See what the boys think about them. Work in progress, so keep up with us on this. <laughs> First one we got: big Super Bowl bet coming in at DraftKings Sportsbook, twenty thousand on the Philadelphia Eagles at twenty-five to one. The bet would win the better upwards of five hundred thousand dollars. Mackie, do we think this is a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I, I I think this is a thumbs up bet, Jesse. I, I I like the I like the payout on a team that could very well come out on top the in their divi- in their division. Exactly, 
And when once you're there, I mean, dude, let a team get hot. Let this is Jalen Jalen Hurts' sophomore year. I mean, you never know what you're gonna get out of a sophomore year quarterback. Hence Joe Burrow. Isn't his third? No, it's, I thought it was his third too, but I read something that said it was his sophomore. Okay, maybe I'm right. You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But regardless, second, yeah. third, it's, it's a quarterback that can come out here and just dismantle this division and get get a like a maybe a 12 and 5 record a 13 and 4 record and you can get maybe even like a first round buy i mean and they just know. got aj brown i'm i'm gonna say i don't love them to necessarily win the super bowl but i do no, have def- them in mul- definitely not i do I, have them in yeah but i'm saying back to your point i do have them in multiple divisional parlays to win their division i i just think with the payout at 25 to 1 odds like this is this, this yeah. is a thumbs yeah. up. You're not I, you're not donating here, in my opinion. Yeah, no, no, I know what you mean. There is you're you're at least gonna see them. Yeah, like you said, in the playoffs, win their division, maybe get a bye second round. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so you we twenty five to one. If you could pick one of the seven, or you know what I mean, one of the eight teams that are remaining in January, that's a pretty good chance, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. Especially at those odds. Yeah, no I'll complaints go, I'll, at those I'll join odds. you on that. I'll give, a, I'll give, give it a thumbs, thumbs up. up. You, yeah. talked <laughs> you talked me into it. All right, two thumbs up from Huff and Mackie. Yeah, I can't complain with those odds. You know, obviously 20 grand on the Eagles coming from Pitts, a Pittsburgh guy. It's just it's a tough bet for me. But it is a thumbs up bet, I think, with those odds. So let's hope the Eagles make it past the divisional round as we're talking. So let's see what happens. Next up at Caesar Sportsbook, somebody put fifteen hundred dollars on Will Fuller to lead the league in receiving touchdowns at plus fifty thousand. That'll win them upwards of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But currently, Will Fuller is a free agent, is not on a team coming into training camp here. <laughs> so, do we think this is a thumbs up or a thumbs down, boys? Mackie, you want to start with this one as well? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna have to go thumbs down here. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean. You might as well place a bet on me to win to have the most receiving <laughs> yards. I am on. We both have the same chance as of right now. He's literally not even on a roster. But I mean, I didn't if you even on a roster, I was trying to think of like, all right, maybe you know, Houston Texans. He could be Davis Mills. Him and Brandon Cooks couldn't be too bad down there. And then I'm like, wait, he's not there anymore. He was in Miami. And then you're like, he's not on a team. I'm like. Damn, yeah, this this is a bad one for me. You can you got you got to be able to find a guy with plus fifty thousand dollars. It's on a roster. It's got to be a better way to throw away fifteen hundred dollars here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this is uh, throwing money down the toilet. I'll go thumbs down for this one. Bad bet. Bad bet. Yeah, definitely a thumbs down for this one. As I said, Will Fuller, free agent. Maybe something will change, and this guy will. I don't know. Maybe have some hope in his bet, but I do not see him leading the league and receiving touchdowns this year. Next up, our good friends at BetMGM. We have somebody putting two grand on the Atlanta Falcons to go 0 and 6 in their divisional games this season. That assuming parlay coming in at plus 500 week one versus the New Orleans Saints, week five at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, week eight versus the Carolina Panthers. Week 10 at the Carolina Panthers, week 15 at the New Orleans Saints, and week 18 versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The bet would win them upwards of $10,000. What do we think about this one? I'm going to go thumbs down here just because 5-1 to odds on this is not nearly high enough, especially like in a division. Like, Granted, I think they very well could go 0-6, but – you play a team twice in the year, you're you're bound to win one game against one yeah. of them. I mean, your divisional rivals. You, I don't know. We figure something yeah. out here. I, I I don't think it's like I think it's the most likely to happen out of the three that we've named, obviously. But in terms of betting of bringing in like the odds and everything like that, I think this is a thumbs down for me. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll go right there with you. Um. I'm not saying that they're going to, you know what I mean, the Falcons are going to come out and win this division or even maybe have a playoff run, but um, I th- I don't think this team is this bad. Uh, Mariota, they, I've been hearing a lot of Mariota isn't looking too great at camp down there, um, wasn't too great in the preseason game, and then Ritter came in and was looking pretty good. So you got to wonder if we see some uh, Desmond Ritter 
a short leash on a guy like Mariota that they brought in this offseason uh, and go to the guy that they drafted this se- or this past draft. They got guys like Drake London that they just drafted too. So I'm not saying Atlanta's going to come out and, like I said, win the division or make a playoff run, but – or even go three and three in the division. I think they literally, like you said, go one and five, two and four in the division. Yeah, lucky to go two and four. But you know, you got a rookie quarterback, and you never know what he can what he could do. I mean, they play the Saint. They play the Saints week one, and it's in Atlanta. So I mean, dude, really like, anything can happen. In they week could lose. They could literally win that game, and and he loses this week one. Yeah. They're only like plus one eighty, plus one sixty. They are yeah. home. They are obviously home dogs. I mean, they're playing the Saints. The Saints I are mean, definitely the better team. They're gonna be home dogs every game, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of find that hard to believe. Plus five hundred for all those games together. They're definitely gonna be home dogs, right? Mm, so th- those yeah. adding up, like plus five hundred, does not seem. That's what I'm right. saying. Like that is not. I mean, you also got to bring in a play, like, actually, like yeah, a couple know. of those games might be close, but one, two, th- you know, six games you're talking in a possible parlay, or I don't know if they're taking them separate or what, but like, say you take, say you take, say you take the odds of every, of every game that they play in their division and you parlayed every single one of those games, it would be way more than plus 500. Yeah. Cause it's, it's gotta be. Legs. It's six yeah. games, dude, and you're plus money at every game. Why? What, what kind of bet is that? Well, no, no, no. You're taking the Falcons to lose. So against uh, the box, against the box. The okay, box you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. Correct. Still, Sorry. six games. Six games, and there's there's probably like three, two, three games that they're in the hundreds, like minus one eighty, minus one seventy. Panther, oh, Falcons at home against the Panthers. The Falcons might be favored. It might be like a minus plus one, like pick them. Exactly. So you're throwing six games into that. I mean, it's, it's you're more than five hundred. Juicy odds off that. It's more than five hundred. Yeah, and then if they beat the Saints at home at plus one eight one sixty week one, then I mean, or I mean, I guess it's the other way around. I'm thinking the whether you guys were Saints are minus like two hundred. Is that the math on that? Somewhere around there. What? What I was the minus one eight? Yeah, probably right around it. If they're minus, yeah. or if they're plus one sixty, probably like two two ten minus two ten. Yeah, they're they're sitting right around. I've seen them around two hundred all off or leading up to week one. So, yeah, that bet could lose week one. Saints aren't necessarily world beaters, so and like I said, anything could happen in week one. Okay, that's all I got for our thumbs up, thumbs down. Looks like it's gonna do. It's a, it's a new segment for us, you know. It's nice to try out, work off of it, see what we can do. Heck yeah, lots of good stuff this week. No episode next week, boys. Getting dialed, getting dialed for season two. Football, baby. Next time. time we talk is time for the NFL. It's time. We made it. Love it. Love to hear it. I'm so sick of baseball. I never want to see one ever again. yeah so that's gonna do it for us this week uh thanks for listening we'll see you guys next week stay tuned to the uh instagram giving out like mackie said kind of pretty sick of baseball it's been kind of sporadic with the picks so um but whenever we like them we're taking them didn't do too hot last night but i've been on a steady climb out of the the hole that we built ourselves early on in the season so um, definitely want to stay tuned to that. Looking to get that card back to positive before the MLB playoffs start. So, yeah, it's going to do it for me here. Thanks for listening. Hand it back off to you guys. Just another great episode. You know, we didn't have a lot on the on the agenda this week, but you know, we always find stuff to talk about, make it interesting. Might have a couple guests coming on for week zero of the yeah. NFL, like Bessie <laughs> said, off next week. Uh, gonna be having uh week zero of the NFL the week before the NFL or the week before the NFL regular season gets going, uh the week before week one, uh where we're gonna be going over all of our futures bets, win totals, uh, you know what I mean, individual awards that we like for the uh 2022 NFL season, 
I know I got a couple that I've already have placed and a couple that I need to place before the season gets rolling. But yeah, that's it. See you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Or no, won't see you next week. See you in two weeks. <laughs> Just got done saying it. <laughs> <laughs> see you in two weeks. Season two coming up. Jam packed next, you know, 19 weeks for us. So stay tuned. We're excited. See you then. And that's going to do it for us this week on Hit the Books Podcast. Thank you for all the support week in and week out. Please be sure to share and check out our various social media platforms and check out our website. All the info is located in our link tree in the description below. And always remember to hit the books.